for the first time, it would be nice to do a service acknowledging and celebrating pride. And so I made a packet, which is um, most of the service. We do have a prayer book because we're going to do one. I didn't put in the Misha Bera. So the Misha Bera we're going to do out of the regular prayer book, which that's the prayer for healing. And I made this whole packet and you know made an event on Facebook. And then I heard from somebody that I used the wrong initials. So, um, so I want to correct that now that I should have put LGBTQIA+. So that's where we're at now. Uh, L Suzanne, your eyebrows are like in your hairline. <laughs> so it's so not everybody uses all of those initials, but for this particular service, one service a year, um, I want it to be as inclusive as we can be. And so we're not going to be saying, you know, 25 times LGBTQIA plus, but that's the title, so that we can really acknowledge all of all of the people who don't identify, who identify as anything other than um, cisgender heterosexual. So cisgender, for anyone for whom that is a new term, means that you identify as the gender that you were identified as at birth. So if you were born and the doctor said, it's a girl, and you're a grown-up woman now, and you identify as a woman, you are cisgender. If the doctor said, it's a boy, and you grew up, and you're a man, and you identify as a man, and you're heterosexual, well, no, you don't have to be heterosexual, right? You don't have to be heterosexual, you just identify as a man. Then you are cisgender, you, are gen you identify as the same gender that you were given at birth. Does that make sense? Okay. See, I still get things wrong all the time too. Um, because this is also, this is something that's developing. And people are finding new ways that they feel right about who they are. And so they want to be acknowledged and we want to acknowledge that. And so you will encounter perhaps people who use the pronoun they or them as a singular pronoun for them. And it has become very common to use they and them for an abstract individual person. Like if, you're, if you don't know the gender of the person you're talking about, it's pretty normal to, these days, although there are some grammarians who still resist it, although I consider myself a pretty solid grammarian and I do not resist it anymore and haven't for many years and so she's snapping back there yay um, but this idea that like uh, when you for, anyone who comes into the synagogue they should take a prayer book does that sound weird to you? that sounds weird to you Stan? you know that they should you know I know but he or she is limiting and they is a little bit more so these are much longer conversations. We're not going to have all of them today. We'll have a couple of them, which is great and makes this all worthwhile. So we're mostly going to use the packet, although we also um, have prayer books for essentially one thing. We are not going to have a regular Torah service today, um, and we are going to have a special speaker. Uh, my daughter, Shoshana, is going to speak about her own experience. Um, and we'll get to that. Meanwhile, let's turn in the packet to page two. Uh, Debbie, do you have your books? So in your book, uh, in the prayer book, it's page 186. So I'm going to be calling out some page numbers, but that's really just for Debbie. You all don't need to use your prayer books, okay? So, the first prayer that we do upon waking up in the morning is gender, because Hebrew is a gendered language. So modet ani, the mo modet is a word that is used if you are male identifying. Moda ani, we'll get to that. Moda ani is uh, the word that you use if you are female identifying. And Hebrew doesn't have a word. 
word for if you are not male or female identifying. Um, and that's why I put question marks there. So you can choose one. There are some people who are using the plural in Hebrew as, as we do in English, but unfortunately the plural in Hebrew is also gender. So people might say modim, but that's still masculine. But sometimes people feel like it's the best that they can do. So we're going to sing this, and I wrote an English word translation that actually is singable to the same tune. So let's sing it first in Hebrew and then in English. Please use whichever modet or moda or motim or mod x or whatever works for you. <laughs> Um, 
Um, let's read it together. This is um, my own interpretive uh, version of the prayer. We recognize that we are each designed by God. God designed us lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, gender fluid, intersex, straight. God designed us with different body shapes, skin colors, and abilities. We are made in God's image, which means that God is everything that each one of us is, and much more. You are blessed, our Creator, who makes us in your image in splendid variety. Elohai Neshama is next in your packet and on page 196 in the book. Thank you. 
page 226 in the book. The Baruch is a call and response. If you're able, please rise. What it means to call and respond as we bless the source of life, so are we blessed. And the blessing gives us strength and makes our vision clear. And the blessing gives us peace and the courage to dare. Oh. 
in the book, it's page 232. It's at the bottom of page 5 in the packet. If you're able, please rise. We're going to do a shema that's a very meditative shema, where we use a whole breath for each word. A whole breath for each word and just let it draw out until it fades away on its own. Shema. We 
will look back at the pages of written history and be amazed. And then we will laugh and sing, and the good that is in us, children in their cradles, will have won. Our hearts beat with certainty that there is a day and an hour and a mountain called Zion, and that all of the sufferings will gather there and become song, bringing out to every corner of the earth from end to end, and the nations will hear it, and like the caravans in the desert, will all to that morning wrong. Mika Mocha is on the next page, 240 in the book.
to those we knew in our own lives had their own relationship with and understanding of God. They understood in their own ways the meanings of God as sovereign, deliverer, helper, and shield. Blessed are you, Adonai, Sarah's helper, Abraham's shield.
Shabbat morning, Betaher Libenu, that of the Chav Eminence. Betaher Libenu, Prayers and 
thoughts, and petitions. I developed a huge crush on one of my friends, but I was still attending school 
with kids who would yell gay across the halls as an insult. This friend was also not a very good friend. <laughs> she kept things from me, things I felt like I should know as her friend. And she was fluent in backhand compliments and showed her love by jokingly saying, I hate you, or playful insults. So, it wasn't good. But she was, and is, very beautiful. And I was on a high from putting a label on myself. Finally putting a name to the things I felt made me really happy. Made me feel like I was part of a community of people who understood the things I felt, but so much of the world didn't understand. Before I came out, I knew for a while that I wasn't straight. Some of my friends knew. But up until I came out to my family, I never really stuck a label to myself. I had, and still have, a lot of insecurities about my identity. And if I made a mistake in telling people that I'm bisexual rather than lesbian or pansexual, or anything else other than what I say I am. There wasn't really an epiphany. When I learned the term bisexual, it was just another word, not a magic word that perfectly categorized my entire identity. It still doesn't. That's why there's so many words for so many different identities and different people in the community. We all want the words we use to perfectly describe us. If there's not a word for our identity, we make a new word, but we're all different. And for all of us to have our own word that perfectly fit who we are, we would need to choose a word. We would need to each choose a word for our own unique ways. But we already have our own unique words in our names. Shoshana Elizabeth Huber will always say more about me than bisexual. But it's easier to have a word that fits under LGBTQFI. A plus to describe yourself because society wants to put you in a box. Even saying I'm bisexual, I've gotten asked things like, but what are you really, <laughs> gay or straight? I'm not gay or straight, I'm bisexual. And just because I'm still exploring my own sexuality and identity doesn't mean I'm confused. It took me a long time to realize what I wanted to call myself. I never saw examples of bisexuality. Kids don't hear about sexuality, period, because it's often thought, because it's so often thought to be inappropriate or something little kids shouldn't be hearing. But as I was growing up, in the shows I watched and the many, many books I read, and even in what I heard here, in services, I never heard or noticed anything about a character who was interested in more than one gender. Sometimes I would hear about gay characters characters exclusively interested in the same gender, but it was rare. I'm sure some people, namely my mother, are eager to prove me wrong <laughs> on not hearing about LGBTQ plus characters in religious context. But if I didn't pick up on that, on it, that part of the Bible clearly hasn't been emphasized. I have always felt a strong connection to Judaism, and my identity hasn't altered that at all. I just wish more kids like me heard about people like them. For any and all members of the LGBTQ plus community, especially young people, there's not a lot of representation anywhere. This is a beautiful place, but right before coming out, I felt like I didn't quite belong. I didn't feel unwelcome, per se, but it, I felt like I was deceiving everyone, so I would be welcome. I think I knew that if I just came out and said it, I would still be welcomed and accepted by the lovely community surrounding me. That doesn't make it any less terrifying. Knowing that my family and my community would still love me didn't make me any less afraid of them saying no. I was terrified of the people I care about seeing this huge part of me, seeing me as more of a whole than I have ever been, and turning away. But none of you have turned away from me after seeing who I am, and for that I will always be grateful. Thank you. Happy Pride. Shalom, shalom.
And in fact, you know, we, we get pretty, uh, Judaism being a patriarchal religion, we don't even get to hear all that much about strong women in Judaism, let alone uh, people who don't conform to heterosexual gender norms. However, these things do exist in our tradition. And in your packets, I gave you just a tiny little taste of the fact that our rabbinic tradition actually recognized one, two, three, four, five, six different genders. They weren't LGBT, <coughs> IQA. Did you say F? I didn't say F. What's Fluid. F? Fluid. Fluid. There's, I was thinking that that was missing. There's so many. I don't even know all of them. I know. Shoshi was in a club that was. I was in a class. My school had an elective for queer studies, and I was in it. Um, but yeah, there's so. Did you say there's like 25 or something? There's probably more than that. I don't even know. As we speak, there's a new one? Probably. Oh, okay. I thought you knew what it was. <laughs> okay. I've been out for 30 years. I can't keep up. Yes, I... Uh-huh. Yeah. So it is really, really important for a lot of people to be able to find themselves reflected in our tradition. And that is something that can be difficult. If we look at the Bible and we ask, are there, is there anybody in the Bible who's bisexual? Well, I can tell you, I, I, can, I can give you two possibilities. Oh, Michael Rose has one. David. I know, that's, the one I, that's one of the ones I was thinking of. King David. King David married multiple women and also had this incredibly close relationship with Jonathan that some people read as a romantic relationship. You don't have to read it that way, and most of the years of our tradition it was not read that way. But this is the beauty of the Bible, is that you can read it in different ways. And certainly, he, David says things to Jonathan like, my life is bound up with your life. Like It's, it's like romance novel language. So, which... I don't know how many of us hear romance on the language in our real life in any gender identity, but there, but there it is. And so that's one. And the other one where people sometimes read uh, not straight up heterosexuality is Ruth and Naomi. That Ruth and Naomi have this extremely close relationship, but both of them are also married to men. So, and Ruth marries a man again. So, so it's hard to say. Um, I will also add that bisexuality in particular has been a difficult identity to hold and continues to be because people in that LGBT, IQF plus, A plus community um, often don't recognize bisexuality as real and they consider it, you know, somebody who can't make a decision or you know, but, but are you really the kind, and, and so people who are bisexual get that both from straight people and from queer people. By the way, somebody last night was saying queer is a slur. Um, queer at this point has been pretty much fully co-opted um, by the LGBTIQAF plus community. Yes, dear? Um, some people still think of queer as a slur, but have problems using it, so a lot of times community is, um, in my mind, which I, I'm i sure that some people will find it to be wrong, is kind of the best catch-all term that we have for right now. Um, and I see two people, three people nodding who all have credibility on this issue, <laughs> so <laughs> um, more than I do. And so anyway, so, so our rabbis did actually recognize different genders, and they're listed in your packet. The first two are Zachar and Nekeva. Zachar and Nekeva are male and female. Those are the ones that come first to our minds. Those are the ones that we assume are the only ones that exist. Um, then there's Androgynos, 
which I think you can probably figure out from the Greek, the rabbis sometimes use Greek words, what that is. It's a person with both male and female sexual characteristics, um, what at some point we might have called hermaphroditic. Um, and by the way, there is also a wonderful midrash that some of you have heard me teach before about the first person, Adam. Um, the, the texts that you have in your packet here are from the first creation story where God makes humanity in God's image uh, and creates them Zachar and Nekeva, male and female. But then there's a second creation story in which God creates one human being, Adam. And usually Adam, not a, not a, a What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a name that can be used for any child, but only for boy children. Um, what's the word for that? Gender neutral name, I suppose. Anyway, we use Adam for boys, and the, the pronoun that's used in most translations is he. Adam is usually translated as man. Um, but really, Adam is just a person, a human. And the rabbis had a problem. They looked at this and they said, well, but the first person was just a single person. But in the earlier story, it says male and female, God created them. How can that be? And so they actually imagined a person that had two sides, a male side and a female side. And when God was creating a helpmate for the person, God split the two into man and woman. And so the rabbis, in their creativity, actually imagined that the first human encompassed all of the sexual characteristics and all of the gender characteristics in one person. So that's, I, I think that's uh, pretty amazing. Um, then we have a tum tum, a person whose sexual characteristics are indeterminate or obscured. An Ionit, a person who is identified as female at birth, but develops male characteristics at puberty and is infertile. So this is this would be um, these are all about physical characteristics, but it's not too hard to read them in other ways. And as I was preparing this service, I was thinking a lot about you know the, the prayer for our bodies and the prayer about our souls. And I was thinking that perhaps gender resides with our souls. And anyway, and then the, the last one is Saris, which is the opposite of Ailonit. Someone who's identified as male at birth but develops female characteristics at puberty and or doesn't have a penis. So you can become a Saris naturally, like you can be born that way or become that way uh, as you grow, or you can become one through human intervention. So in your packet, there's the number of times that these various categories are mentioned. These are, this, is, this is really something that was part of rabbinic thought. And the point of it is not to say that Judaism recognizes these six genders, and these are the six genders that there are, but rather that Judaism recognizes historically, going back hundreds of years, that male and female, is, it's not that simple, and that's not all there is. And so our tradition does have the flexibility to recognize and go beyond male and female. And I think that today, that is very important for us. It may not have seemed important to the rabbis hundreds of years ago, although they had these situations that came up in terms of people's bodies that they had to decide how to deal with because the entire Jewish tradition is set up based around, here's what males do, here's what females do. And so if you're going to mix those up, then you have to decide, what do we do with that? And so that's why they talked about it, and, that's, and they did recognize it. And so that's important for us to do too. And so may we recognize all of the ways in which our tradition is flexible. May we recognize that our tradition supports 
different kinds of gender identities. And may we be supportive of all of those in our midst, whatever their gender identity or expression may be. Amen. Amen. And now we turn our thoughts to those among us and those in our hearts who are ill and who are in need of healing. For this, I am going to ask you to open your prayer books to page 371. If you have two sets of numbers, that's in the bracketed numbers, page 371. And we hold in our thoughts and in our hearts for healing today, Shirley Hyatt, Robert Serpico, Yefilia Seruel Ben Mashat Svi, Evelyn Urbano, Ronnie Torek, Ira Weiss, Debbie Shana Basfredel, Hanna Basrivka, Lenny Drucker, Elaine Drucker, Evelyn Pinkus, Barry Strumpf, Judith Weiss, Lester Schenker, Myron Klein, Aiden Miller, Charlie Lennigan, Noah Giesen, and Mikhail Shuri. We also include all of those who have been wounded in service to our country or Israel and all of those who have been harmed based on their gender identity or relationships, including trans women of color who experience a particularly high level of violence. We include those living in fear because of their gender identity. We include those who have been hurt in recent disasters, both natural and human. Page 371 in the middle of the page.
upon us. It is our responsibility to bring about the day when all the world will be one. We're going to read an alternative alenium. It's on page 12 and 13 in your packet. It's a prayer written by Alden Solaby. If you're able, please rise. Let's read together. One day, the words coming out will sound strange. Oppression based on gender or orientation will be a memory. History to honor and remember. The pain of hiding, repressing, denying. Honoring the triumphs of those who fought to be free. Remembering the violence and vitriol that cost lives. When love wins, when love wins at long last, vea hafta la reafa kamocha, love your neighbor as yourself will be as natural as breathing. Vea hafta la reafa kamocha. One day, love will win every heart, love will win every soul, fear will vanish like smoke, and tenderness for all will fill our hearts. Love wins. In the end, love wins. Man for man, woman for woman, woman for man, man for woman. All genders, all orientations, all true expressions of heart. Let this come speedily in our day. A tribute to the many and the diverse gifts from heaven. A tribute to love, deep and true, each of us for one another. Be'ahavta l'reyaka kamocha. You may be seated. turn our thoughts now to those who are no longer with us, our loved ones who have died in the last days or weeks or months or in past years at this time of the year. In your prayer books, the Mourner's Kaddish is on page 598. Today we include all of those who have been murdered because they were LGBT QIAF plus, including Shira Banki, age 16, who was murdered during the Jerusalem Pride March in 2015. The 49 people who were murdered in the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando in 2016. Harvey Milk, the first openly gay elected official in California, assassinated in 1978. Matthew Shepard, beaten and left to die in Laramie, Wyoming in 1998. And just last month, Paris Cameron, 20, a black transgender woman, was among three people killed in a horrific anti-LGBTQ shooting in a home in Detroit on May 25th. Alante Davis, 21, and Timothy Blanchard, 20, both gay men, were also found, were found dead at the scene and Cameron died of her injuries. We include all of those who have died of AIDS, particularly in the early days when people didn't know what was happening and didn't know what to do about it, and so many died. We include those who have committed suicide because their gender identity was unacceptable to others. And we include also those in countries outside the United States who have been executed for their gender identity or expression. And we remember those from our community who have died in the past year. Andrew M. Cohen, Roberta Kessman, Netta Albright, Roz Kirschenbaum, Robert Pincus, Mark Poster, Jacques Rosampic, Iris Anis Horn, Sherry Weaver, Charlene Node, 
Roger Berkshire, Robert Pandolfo, Barry Peretz, Don Katz, Sandra Platt, Stuart Schaefer, Samuel Amrani, Belle Joseph, Ricky Sprung, Ralph Tarika, Sylvia Rudorfer, Randall Waybright, Doris Fries, Marvin Hyatt, Dean Plotnik, Arthur Zaro, Barbara Salkind, Brittany Kadri, Elise Garner, Jean Glass, and Miriam Paul. I'd like to invite you now to add the names of anyone for whom you are saying the Mourner's Cottage today. Again, please rise or raise your hands.
Brotherhood Picnic at Floyd Bennett Field Community Gardens. Uh, that's eight dollars per person, unless you're under 13, in which case it is free. Uh, you, there's hot dogs and stuff, and people will also bring other food. If it rains, it'll be in the banquet room here. Um, and it's, it's a really nice time. It's worth going to. It's for everybody. It's sponsored by Brotherhood. Monday, July 1st, Israeli dance is at 7.30. Tuesday is Torah study at 1 p.m. And there are up to Daniel chapters 10 and 11. And I'm here to tell you, Daniel is a wild ride. So uh, <laughs> super fun. Go for that. And Sam Silverman leads it, so also great. Shalom Shabbat is on hiatus now until August. Uh, next week, July 6th, I am going to be away. I'm going to be on vacation from the 6th to the 13th. And so those two weeks services will be led by our brand new associate rabbi educator who's starting on Wednesday, uh, Alexis Pinsky. So if you would like to show her your support on her first Shabbat service, it is next Saturday morning. Um, also, uh, so that service will be in, in this room, but then for the rest of the summer, we're going to be in the community room, which is easier to pool than this room. Um, yeah, that. So uh, on July 13th, after services, there's a light lunch and book discussion. The book is Kaddish.com by Nathan Englander. The Women of Mashir Year and Dinner, which is only for women identifying people, um, is at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, July 17th at Patsy's Pizzeria in Bay Ridge. But on Thursday, 25th, where everyone is the fundraiser at the Ararayan Hibachi Steakhouse. And all you have to do is go to the Ararayan Hibachi Steakhouse in Bay Ridge, where I'm told they have valet parking, and have some Ararayan Hibachi steak. And eat it, and enjoy it, and 15% of your bill will come to the temple. So it's fundraising without even noticing it. Um, and then we also have the Rosh Hashanah Honey Fundraiser, which you, you will notice yourself fundraising, but you will also be buying honey for your friends and family at $12 a jar, of which some amount comes to the temple. Six. And how much? Half of it comes to the temple. Half of it? The right family? No. Not quite. Four, four pounds. Four, 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 that is not too shabby. That's better than 15%, folks. Um, so, what better gift for your friends and family at Rosh Hashanah, which is rapidly becoming a gift-giving holiday? <laughs> As of now. Rabbi? Uh, yes? What, what website can people visit to order that honey? The website that you can visit is honey.mishare.org. So you can say to your spouse or loved one, honey... Mishare.org. Mishare.org. <laughs> okay, and yeah. Well, do you still have to click the honey link if you go to honeyforshare.org? Yes. Oh, okay. So you still have to um, click the link. Use the code BSH, which is for the shares, obviously. Obviously. Um, order before August 5th, and you don't even have to pay shipping. All right. So there's a stock plate on your way out of the sanctuary, uh, which that money goes to people who are in need. And please join for the owning in the community room following the service. We are going to end in your packet on page 14 with Over the Rainbow, which somebody told me is like a sort of an anthem. Over the Rainbow. What? Yes, I put a rainbow picture. Isn't that nice? Did, did everybody appreciate this packet?
word do and give you peace. Amen. Oh, that's great. That's great. I had my concern.